Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Applied Materials Inc, ticker AMAT. Over the next five minutes, I'll go over both my thoughts on the valuation of this company and its business quality. Let's dive on in. First up is industry. This is in the semiconductors and semiconductor equipment industry. They manufacture equipment, services, and software for semiconductors, displays, and related industries. Um, develops, manufactures their manufacturer, has various technologies. Um, they do provide fab work. The display and adjacent market offered LCD displays, OLEDs, um, so operate across a lot of the, the world. Um, one thing that immediately comes to mind when you look at this return on invested capital chart is it looks very cyclical. So that's that's my first impression here. Also, we can see that they lost money in two of the last 20 years. It's not terrible. Um, ideally, it'd be like one or less, but two is, is, is acceptable. Um, we do see a lot of numbers of this return on capital in the double digits, but you don't stay solidly there. So in 2012, 2013, despite not losing money, they had one and 2% return. So you see a lot of cyclicality here, but certainly since 2014, the returns have looked really good. So the question is, is it still cyclical? Has that, ch has that changed? Because that's going to impact how we evaluate the company. 10-year median return. So return on equity, 29%. That's really good. Return on invested capital, 18%. Return on assets, 13%. All these numbers are really, really good. They indicate high quality. But that cyclicality means that it's not telling the full story because you are getting some loss years and you are getting some low numbers. So the arithmetic median uh, average and the compound average is going to be slightly different. So it's going to overstate perhaps uh, how much the company could compound. Now, the valuation on the surface looks really attractive. A PE of 15.7, PE of 15, that's really good. I like to buy companies at a PE of 15 or less, so I'm liking what I see with this price-to-earnings ratio. But you have to be concerned that the return on invested capital is the highest it's been in the last 20 years. And for a cyclical company, that imposes some danger. For instance, if the return earnings were to drop by 50%, well now you have a PE of 30 and then you're paying way too much for the company. So you have to be careful because a 50% drop in earnings from this level wouldn't be out of line with historical expectations. But you can see a lot of this is, is in a good spot. So the revenues are growing faster than assets, um, which, and, which is allowing the EPS to grow even faster. So you're showing operating leverage that all looks really good. Um, it's, it's quite attractive in what we're seeing here besides the cyclicality. You can see that the last year of that 34% revenue growth really drove a massive increase in gross profit. So your gross profit margin got boosted up significantly. Your operating margin is almost double what it looks like you had sometimes earlier in the decade. And then so that you turn that 34% revenue growth into 63% earnings growth. And that's where you see this massive change. I mean, it shows you going from basically nine cents in earnings to 2012 to 640 in earnings. So you've seen massive growth in earnings capability in this company. If the company is not going to be cyclical going forward, that's very attractive. So you can see how that 34% return on invested capital turned into 51% return on equity. All of these numbers are amazing. If this is real, if, the, if they can sustain these numbers the last few years, then this company is a very attractive business that you want to consider. But without doing a further analysis, it's going to be really hard to determine that. I mean, we've seen massive net income growth. You're starting to see really high um, bottom lines based upon the revenue go, really strong margins. Um, shares outstanding have also declined over time. So you really like to see that they seem to be buying back shares, maybe not completely every year, but you can still see a pretty steady share decline. So you like to see that it means that there's some pretty good capital allocation taking place here. So let's look at assets. You've, you've maybe doubled the assets, but this property plant and equipment is very low. You only have 2 billion in property plant and equipment, except the earnings was what, 5 billion? Yeah, so you're, you have very strong returns on assets. So that's clearly showing on the balance sheet. Um, you like to see what you're, you like what you see there. Um, they've certainly increased the debt over time, but not to a significant degree that's out of line with your cash flow. So every year for the last 10 years, you've had positive cash flow from operations. That's a good sign here as well. Not only that, it's also grown. You've had some cyclicality, but even those years with low profitability, you still had strong cash flow. So we like to see that that's really strong for the business. You can see that they are buying back shares on a decently regular basis, but it's it's quite variable, whether it's a billion one year, 
up to $5 billion in 2018. So it's variable. Maybe they're opportunistic. Um, could be a pretty good sign, um, but it would probably be hard to predict. So you see these returns on tangible equity tangible capital employed always in the double digits. That's really what you want to see for high quality companies. Basically what this, the consensus here is if this company can compound from its current rate area, if they're not going to decline, if this isn't going to be cyclical in the future, then this is not only a good price to consider for this company. This company could be a steal at a PE of 15. If you're able to grow at something like 16% EPS over the next 10 years, then this company is going to be absolutely amazing in terms of an investment. So I'm seeing signs of high quality, especially over the last five years. If your top of the cycle is 27% or 34% and your bottom of the cycle is 21% in terms of your return on invested capital, that's amazing. So it doesn't matter if it's cyclical up here. It doesn't even matter if it's cyclical down here at 15%. It does matter if you're cyclical in the range of 1%, 2% return on invested capital or losses. Those are unacceptable levels. So you really need to understand the future here and that would take a further analysis. But at least in this assessment, I think this is a company at least worth doing further research on. I think it requires further research. So it's the type of company that could be on a watch list. The valuation seems attractive, but I'm a little worried of paying a price that's maybe at the peak of a cyclical top. So all of my research would be focused. Is this at a cyclical top? Is it not? Thank you for listening to this. Don't forget to like this video. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can get notifications as I upload new videos. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.